Jason Sokoloff, and I'm coming to you from our laboratories in Bell Mead, New Jersey, and today I'm going to show a few items related to femtosecond pulses, namely a fiber femtosecond laser and an autocorrelator. The fiber femtosecond laser is not of much interest, but hopefully the autocorrelator is. Now, if we look over here, we can see a homemade fiber femtosecond laser. It is a design from the literature. It's got a figure eight loop of fiber with a, a 980 diode pumping some erbium fiber and some polarization rotators. The mechanism of mode locking of this laser is nonlinear polarization rotation. And when these two polarization rotators are properly set, we get a mode lock train of pulses coming out about 30 megahertz and, in, and several hundred femtoseconds in length. This laser doesn't work all that well, but works well enough for a demonstration. Now one way of looking at the train of pulses is to use a fast photodiode from one of the laser outputs, like this one, which in this case is not hooked up. A second way, which is useful for looking at the actual optical pulse shape, is to use an autocorrelator, such as the one here that was beneath my business card. This laser has very few adjustments that are all made at, during assembly, uh, such, as, um, such as the speed, uh, the gain, the optical alignment, of course, and also the range of the autocorrelator. Here's what the autocorrelation trace looks like coming from this laser. This screen is about 350 femtoseconds. The pulse is maybe a little over 200 femtoseconds. And as I said, the, the range of the autocorrelator is, is set during assembly and that's either good or bad how you look at it. For, for simple direct applications where you have a dedicated laser of a certain pulse width, of course it's good, and that is the main point of this optical autocorrelator. When I turn the autocorrelator off, with the on-off switch, of course the trace will go away. If I turn the autocorrelator back on, after some short initialization time for the firmware, the pulse should reappear like that. And of course, one of the advantages of the optical autocorrelator is that it helps you to adjust your pulses. So if I play around with my laser, this very sensitive nonlinear polarization rotation, you can see that I can in increase or, or, or decrease the quality of my pulses by changing some of the adjustments and the, the autocorrelator helps me get that. Here I'm playing around with the pump power and I'm dancing right around threshold and we can see that the trace will come and go depending on whether or not I'm above mode locking threshold. So, to summarize, this is the optical autocorrelator. Uh, it comes with various features. Here's the input. You just input the optical fiber into the autocorrelator. This is a collimator. It takes, um, this particular one takes an angled connector. It can also come with a flat connector. Or you can remove the collimator and put an aperture for free space applications as well. So in that sense it's versatile, it's simple, and most of all it's small, which is important if you have particular OEM applications where your size restricted. Thank you for